Coaching Corps' mission is to level the playing field for kids of color in low-income communities by increasing access to quality sports programming with coaches trained in helping young people become their best selves. Today, Coaching Corps has placed 18,000 coaches with hundreds of after-school sports programs serving over 200,000 youth in underserved communities across the country. Hey, Sully here, what an opportunity I have to interview folks especially when it has to do with Coaching Corps, and we are, uh, we're so blessed to have on our set today, Monique Henderson, uh, and it, it, she needs no introduction. Monique Henderson, of course, uh, competed in the, uh, in the 2000, 04, 08 Olympics, won gold in both, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Athens, Greece, as well as uh, Beijing, uh, and as a member of the four by 400 meter relay. And then Gary McDonald, Morse High School track coach, uh, you've been in town just maybe two years longer than I have, my friend. I, I, I've heard about you uh, for a number of years, but I get a chance to interview these guys. And uh, obviously, Monique uh, was a grad in 2001 uh, at from Morse High School. And I got to ask you guys, um, first of all, welcome. This is really yeah. exciting for us. But you have to say in your business, he is a critical role <laughs> player in what you do, correct? Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Um, I mean, well, just the role of a coach is... Yeah. so important right. it's more than just teaching you the skills of the sport it's about being a mentor it's about being a friend a confidant um, so many things and he truly went above and beyond all of that do you give him credit for the fact that you had to balance work on track and in school and at home and everywhere else yeah this, this man is amazing uh, he gets all the credit being a high <laughs> schooler and making my first Olympic team it was the first time in over 30 years that yep. it happened, and it's for a reason. It's hard yeah. to be a high schooler with school, with yeah. family, with so many different things, and still stay focused on your sport, and he was able to do that for Gary me. Gary McDonald, I got a question for you, because you have to take a 50,000 foot view every single year, and start <laughs> over again every single year. How do you do that, and how did you see in Monique what you eventually saw was going to be an Olympian? Well, I think one of the exciting things about coaching is the fact that you start with a new group, you know, each, yeah. each year. Um, I actually met Monique long before she came to Morse. Um, her mom and dad ran a track club, the Emma King Blasters. And so I knew her, yeah. but the, the, the exciting part, as I said, is that we get a good new group each time. Um, and they're all different. Well, the, but then it, it brings up the question, when you see someone like this for the first time, because there's always that first day, right? Yep. You blow the whistle, round them all up, let's see what you can do. What did you see when you saw that? Um, I saw a young lady that was committed to be the best that she could be um, and was willing to do the work. Um, was that from the very start? From the very start. And we're talking, if I'm not mistaken, because I, I have two girls that were in high school, you're talking like 14, 15, 16 year old kids here. Yeah. And she had that kind of dedication at that age. Yes. And, and, and I'm assuming, Monique, that he fostered that out of you. Once oh, yeah. he saw that <laughs> nugget in you, he brought that out in you, oh, right? Definitely. Um, uh, best advice that you could give uh, to, to kids growing up that are sort of in your position? And uh, look, we're in a different time than even when you were in high school. We're certainly a different time than you and I were in high school. That's and, and, you know, with respect to independence and with respect to how we communicate and such, what is some of the best advice that you could pass on to kids as well as adults and their parents and everybody else that were in that position that you, were, that you found yourself in on this team sport? I would say when things are hard, don't give up. This, these day and age, we see so many people just quit when things get hard, and we never know what their potential really is. So mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of hard days, but with his encouragement, it was easy to stay focused and not give up. One of those things that you got to witness with Gary is that as you see uh, fans of yours in the track and field uh, world come up to you, and many of them young people, how, what kind of advice do you pass on to them uh, about listening to the coach, maybe deferring to their <laughs> wisdom, and how sometimes uh, age will uh, overcome youth and experience, and that's a tough one to teach the kids sometimes. Oh my gosh, yes, but definitely just having confidence in your coach and knowing that they're there for your best interest, and they're not gonna have you do anything that's just pointless. Yeah. You know, if you feel like it is, then ask them, and right. they can give you an explanation. Have, have you, Gary, has your relationship grown with her? I mean, it must be great after they graduate, but to watch her, during the process yeah. and then go through what was that like and, and how did the relationship continue after the coaching uh, um, into a friendship? Well, in the coaching part, um, like I say, she was a dream to work with. Yeah. She worked hard, um, did listen. Um, 
was willing to speak up when she thought things were need to be different. No, when, and when you put her in the hands of another coach, what was that like? Was there any interaction there with the other coach? I mean, you, 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 no. the transfer of power, so to speak, <laughs> over no. to the athlete. Um, when she went to UCLA, um, there was, I mean, it was, I stepped back because I, I needed to. Cause that's that's going to be tough, though. Well, I stepped back as a coach. I didn't step back as a friend, <laughs> as somebody who. And right there, that's the important part, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. How, how important was that to you, that, that he transferred from coach to supporting friendship and, uh, and always oh, somebody you could lean on? It, it was just the journey. You know, it wasn't anything that was surprised or anything. I just knew that he'd always be in my life. Sure. What's next for you? You're still going to coach? You're not, you're not leaving coaching world, are you? No, actually, I'm, uh, I'm a track starter and official, so I don't coach anymore, but I'm still involved yeah, but you're in still, But you are still there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you're still the presence that's there, <laughs> right? You ever think about coaching? You ever think about uh, entering into that position? That's <laughs> because of him. That's what I do. I'm a head right. coach at a community college right. in track and field, and I just hope that I can be half the coach that he is. Coaching core makes it possible for kids uh, in underserved communities and communities of color have access to sports. And if you want more information, I want you to go to coachingcore.org. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time out. If you guys want to come back anytime, we'd love <laughs> to have you come. Thank, right. thank you very much. Thanks so much.